Now, as it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, which has always been celebrated in October since the 80s, it's called Pink October. As people around the world adopt the pink color and display a pink ribbon to raise awareness about the importance of prevention and routine screening for the early diagnosis of breast cancer. As the Breast Cancer Awareness Month draws to an end this October, recent research indicates that breast cancer rates are similar between black and white women. However, black women have a higher incidence of breast cancer before age 45, while white women show significantly higher rates between ages 60 and 84. Now, despite these patterns, black women are more likely to die from breast cancer at any age. Although black women are less likely to be diagnosed with cancer than white women, they are more likely to die from it within five years. Now, this gap is especially pronounced with breast cancer, which claims the lives of black women at a rate of 40 at a rate 40 percent higher uh, than white women, despite having a 4 percent lower diagnosis rate. Joining us now as we discuss the Breast Cancer Awareness Month, which ends today, is Estelle Dobo, Chief Operating Officer and co-founder of Syndicate Bio. Good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning. Thank you for having me. All right, now let's get straight into it. Uh, you know, when we look at breast cancer, especially when you look at the statistics here in Nigeria, it seems Nigeria has one of the highest mortality rates uh, from this disease in the world. Uh, oh, why, why are the numbers of death from breast cancer so big locally? Thank you for your question. So um, maybe just a little... Um to set the stage, so breast cancer is uh, a cancer that forms in the breasts and um, it does uh, occur at higher rates within women. So WHO estimate that there's about 2.3 million new cases of breast cancer every year. And WHO also does emphasize that majority of the casualties, up to 70% uh, of the casualties, appear in the lower income countries, which Nigeria is part of. So um, it is well known that in this part of the world, because of the lack of awareness and because of some of the uh, ecosystem challenges that we have, lower uh, lo number of specialists to take care of the, the patient, we do uh, see more women die um, later on uh, when, once they are diagnosed. They get diagnosed uh, much later as well. Uh, in, there's a common um, um, criteria in cancer, uh, which is the staging. So uh, cancer is categorized from stage zero one, where it's non-invasive, all the way to stage four, where uh, it becomes metastasis. So it means that more uh, organs in the body have been um, uh, are now, um, sorry, so the women are, have a more systematic disease. And uh, in this part of the world, in Nigeria specifically, most of the patients that we see do have um, metastasis disease, so more diagnosed at stage four, where the prognosis is, is, is quite poor. And to take to the point you made earlier about black women versus white women, we're also seeing that the, the type of cancers amongst the two type of race is significantly different. So, uh, and that can be, um, that can be um, because of the genetic factors. Uh, we do see that there's a genetic variety between black and white. And black women tend to have uh, the disease that is mo much more aggressive. And um, that's all of that contribute to higher mortality rate in Nigeria and in Africa in general. All right, thank you very much, um, Estelle, for, for that opening statement. One thing I'd like to ask is around statistics here in Nigeria and available care. I ask because if we're going to understand the extent of the challenge or to take it very seriously, it's important to have numbers. Do we have statistics? Are there organizations working around data as well so that the data that we're relying on is home-based, homegrown data? And then, of course, um, in terms of support available, what kind of support is available for women here in Nigeria? So in terms of statistics, we do have um, 
epi epidemiological statistics, we know that breast cancer is the most common cancer among women globally, but also in Nigeria. So 23% of all cancers that are diagnosed in Nigeria are breast can uh, amongst women are breast cancer. So that also, that already tells us that it's a disease that needs to be taken very seriously. But when it comes to the data and um, maybe to backtrack a little bit on that as well, when we are talking about cancer, they are um, the environmental and lifestyle factors, but there's also the genetic uh, of breast cancer. While we know that environmental and uh, lifestyle do impact uh, how a patient would, uh, would uh, how a patient's disease would develop, the genetic factor also extremely important um, because the genetics tells us what type of uh, cancer specifically this patient has, and it helps the physicians as well as the patient to agree on the specific treatment that would be, would be um, helpful for the, for the patient. And on that, that, that data is very unavailable. Um, that is an African problem as a whole, and in Nigeria uh, more specifically. So in terms of support, really, it, it's very difficult to um, help patients that are already at that very late stage of disease, right? So it means that many more, um, the, many of these patients will not be able to access the best type of care, which are in this case um, targeted therapies uh, for those very aggressive type of cancers. But of course, before the patients are diagnosed and get to that stage, we are able to uh, implement screening strategies. We are able to, um, so for example, th this month, it's been the month of breast uh, cancer awareness. So many women are being encouraged for our self breast um, evaluation. To, and for the women above 40, we are also uh, having to encourage women to um, screen uh, for, from a mammographic test. So um, that, those are, that's where we are right now when it comes to breast cancer in Nigeria. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, so for me, uh, the insight will now be about uh, screening machines. I mean, what's the availability of screening machines across the country. The availability of screening machines, like mammogram machines, because people are not picking up cancer on time and it's doing more damage when they pick it up later. What's the availability of screening machines across the country? Mammogram are relatively available in the country, but uh, there again, we need to look at the type of mammograms that um, would allow uh, physicians to actually have a good view of the, of the tumor. So um, most of our teaching hospitals do have um, basic mammography uh, available, um, but there again, the issue is patients have to pay to have access to those mammography. And we also have maybe two or three centers across the country that have a 3D mammography where we here we can see the disease with a more um, with in more details uh, and those uh, mammography equipment are available mostly in private set, uh, centers. So I think that maybe to bring it back, what women need to start doing, um, it's you need to start with them. You need to start with um, self evaluation, right? Uh, most women on a monthly basis uh, should be able to know that um, what, what the state of their breast, and then uh, when they qualify for mammography, when later on they want to uh, have access to screening and do mammography, uh, it, it becomes a little more challenging, obviously, because we do not have the best type of mammograph across the country. But yes, this is, this is, um, this is really uh, where we are. All right. Thank you so much for that. I'd love to dispel some myths around breast cancer this morning. Uh, of course, uh, you know, here in Africa, there's the age old myth where many women believe that it's a spiritual ailment. Uh, then there are also some women who believe that um, mammograms also lead to uh, d bursting the tumor if there is one and making and actually creating cancer. There are some people who believe that. Uh, so, you know, can you dispel some of the myths around breast cancer? And can you also let us know how the information campaign is going around dispelling myths uh, around the country? So first of, I think um, what's very important to say is that breast cancer is a disease that can be, can be cured. 
in other parts of the world where um, um, patients are being diagnosed at early stages, the survival rate goes up to 99%. Uh, the five-year survival rate goes to up to 99%. So from a tangible point of view, patients can actually survive when they are caught early. And there's no, um, there's no evidence, I do not have any evidence, we do not have evidence that mammogram actually causes cancer. What does cause cancer is when women do not present on time. And we also know that uh, the genetics the genetics, which is how the, uh, the mutations that uh, occur within the tumor would have a much higher, uh, um, uh, would predict, um, um, uh, would be a much higher predictability factor that will help us understand if this patient will respond well to treatments or if this patient will, will have a disease that will progress much faster. So those are meat, and I think that a lot of our public uh, organizations are doing work to uh, dispel those meats. Uh, they are also ongoing work with, uh, for example, the National Institute of Cancer Research and Treatment, which currently is hosting the International Cancer Week here in um, in, uh, in Abuja is uh, working with multiple stakeholders to build on uh, the science that breast cancer is a curable disease and uh, inviting different type of stakeholders, including patient groups, uh, including nurses. And so we need to continue to have that multi-stakeholder approach to make sure that the right information is passed across and uh, women all across the country have access to that information in order to make the right decisions for themselves. All right, thank you very much for that. Now let's talk about early detection as we begin to round off. Um, early detection is key, is what is usually said for any form of cancer, particularly breast cancer. Um, how often should women test or do the mammogram or breast scan? Um, and at what point should there be an alarm raised? Are there symptoms? Are there things that people should look out for women especially? I think this is quite important. And just to also debunk that myth that there should be no fear in going to, you know, going for testing. I know we say we'll never have it in Jesus. It's not my portion in Jesus' name, but just to really um, encourage more women to test so they can get detection or get detected early if they have uh, breast cancer. Please, very briefly as we round off. So early, so I touched a little bit on uh, self-breast examination earlier. We spoke a little bit about mammogram. And for women, especially when they begin to approach the age of 40, it's um, important that they, you know, they understand their body and understand how the body change on a, on a regular basis. And um, regarding the symptoms, the early symptoms for breast cancer, which are not exhaustive, obviously, and we encourage every patient whenever, every uh, women, women, sorry, whenever they see a change in their body to consult with a doctor and, uh, you know, to confirm. But um, typically, uh, if we, we see that one breast is bigger than the other one, we feel a lump or uh, sometimes the, the skin of the, of the, um, the, the breast would have a feel of the, the skin of an orange. So those are little, or maybe there's some abnormal discharge from the nipple. So those are symptoms that um, show that the woman needs to see uh, 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 their doctor as quickly as possible. Right. Uh, the, the other thing that beginning to em, em, uh, emerge is women that have seen that in the family mm. they had relatives that have had a breast cancer right. can now these days screen uh, ahead of time to All see right. if um, they are at higher risk of developing breast cancer. Thank you so very much, Estel Dogo, for your time with us. This is such an important conversation. And great that in the month of October, which is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we're bringing it to the front burner. And so we hope that women who, who are watching, and even men who have women, sisters, mothers, daughters, friends in their lives, would also help to spread the, the message so that early detection can indeed go a long way in ensuring that more women are able to survive breast cancer. Thank you very much for your time.